All right, guys, it's Saturday morning, and I say morning, and I use that term loosely. But nonetheless, it is still the AM. So, yes, um, to you vlog number two. I haven't showered. I'm all like, because I just got up. Uh, but I got to go cut the grass. I ended up not doing it yesterday. So I'm going to make some coffee and then probably drink that and then go outside. So there's my I have people over coffee maker and here's my just me coffee maker. So this thing's pretty easy. All you got to do is fill up my Christmas cup. I realize it's not the season. Then dump that water in the reservoir. And then take these little pods, or this pod holder, I guess you could say, and I use these, these things, because you can get them pretty cheap. And you can get them in stores too, which is nice. So stick one in the bottom, if I like my coffee strong, so it recommends using two. And one on the top. Now I really actually don't make coffee at home that much, because it's free at work. So I know this isn't the most cost-effective solution, but it works for the occasional cup. Ah, feeling better already? All right, I'm getting ready to head out, but here's my favorite part about the, the Pebble smartwatch. More than anything else it does, this is my favorite thing. I use this when I drive, and now it's going to be really handy when I'm outside doing yard work. So I've got the iPhone in my pocket, and I pulled up a random Pandora station, which is why I love Pandora, because whenever people come over, they, I always have them just create a Pandora station, and then I've got all these Pandora stations in my Pandora library, and I just pick one at random, and that's what I go with, and it's fun. So apparently, this one was uh, Robin Radio, so yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so here's what's nice. So I've got the phone in my pocket, but then I've got the watch right on my wrist. I've got the volume controls on the actual headset, which is nice. And then I've got the watch, so I can control volume, and I can control what song I'm listening to without having to ever take the phone out of my pocket. And I can actually even see what the song is. So that's awesome. I'm really enjoying that. So I'm going to go put this to the test for the first time and get to cutting some grass. All right, the grass is cut. It's looking good. Ah, so green. Nice and green. Bushes are starting to bloom a little bit. So is the tree. See it over there. Uh, the car, though, really need to clean the old Mazda 3. It's got all the winter crud on it. And then, of course, you got all the crap on the floor from the winter as well. And then, of course, this is why I need to get a dumpster. These are all the boxes from all the stuff I've ordered. Uh, and then that's a really old PC actually down there from like 2000, 2001. But yeah, a lot, lot of stuff here. Got to throw that away. But yeah, the, uh, the Pebble watch worked like a charm. Uh, no problems at all. And uh, it's not too hot out. I think it's, it's like 60 degrees. So beautiful day. And uh, I guess it's time to go inside and relax a little bit, get a shower. I got to eat something. Oh, pit stop. Yeah. Yeah. Rockstar. Yeah? Do I need to trim your claws? Yeah, probably. You're getting hung up on stuff. All right, so Adobe Creative Cloud. Installing things. So we're almost there. Got uh, InDesign installing now. And it's 98%. All right, so why did I buy Creative Cloud? Obviously, I already had Premiere. Uh, the reason being is actually what I do for a living is I'm the communications and media manager at a, a large commercial construction firm. So I, I was doing work from home, uh, some video and, and other work. So I had a license of CS 5.5 that works supplied. However, I feel like I'm kind of crossing a moral threshold now where I'm using the creative suite about 95% of the time for my personal gain for, for doing uh, Tech Uploaded. So I felt like I was kind of crossing a moral threshold there and decided for $29.99 a month I would put my, my feelings at ease and actually buy the software for myself 
since I'm using it for my my personal projects. So that's what I did. Oh, InDesign's been installed. So there we go. But the good news is, is once we upgrade to Creative Cloud at work, this guy will know how to use it. All right. Wow, sunny. Oh, there you go. Even brighter. So it's about 640 and I really haven't eaten anything today. So I'm heading out to the store because I think it's I think it's a good grill in the evening. It's about 67 degrees according to the thermometer on the car. And it's just, as you can see, really sunny, really nice out. So I'm gonna go get some Italian sausages, I think. Those sound pretty good. And uh, yeah, maybe make some burgers and some sausages. I like the Italian sausage thing because you can make them and then you can keep them around. They're really easy to heat back up in the microwave. So I just buy a pack of five, or I think, and that's another stupid thing. They come in packs of five. Why don't they come in six, or however many come in a pack of buns? But anyway, I just make the whole pack, and then I have them, I can heat them back up in the microwave, or I can bring them to work for lunch. It's kind of nice. All right, I just got out of Kroger, and I have to say, that was the most efficient shopping experience I've ever had. It's packed in here. Everybody's out because everybody's buying stuff because it's Easter tomorrow. And I, I kind of forgot about that too. I'm like, why are so many people shopping for groceries? Easter, duh. But anyway, it's packed in the store. And it's not a very big Kroger. And I get to the registers and they're just packed. I waited maybe three minutes. They got two people through that line. And then I literally got from putting my stuff on the carousel or the, the little, I guess, conveyor thing to having the last bag placed in my cart in, in literally less than 60 seconds. Unbelievable. So that's why I pay a little bit more sometimes to come to Kroger versus going to like Target or Walmart or something like that. It's just fast here. I always have good service here, but I don't know, I'm, I'm really, I get really excited about good service. So when it happens, I get pretty pumped and it just happened and I'm pumped. All right, burger time. You know how much I like my burgers. So there's my burger, just chilling. And then I've got some corn on the cob. I just microwaved for about two minutes and 50 seconds or so. A little trick here, you microwave corn on the cob, and then watch this. All right, so there's the corn. So what you wanna do is cut this, not this end, but this end. So cut that off. And when you do it this way, you get all the corn without any of the silt. All right, Sunday morning. I'm still not showered yet. It's Easter Sunday, so I'm gonna do that. I'm actually doing a bunch of laundry right now, uh, so you can probably hear that in here. Just getting it done. Still got my winter gloves out. Some of that. So we're gonna eat at three o'clock, but knowing my parents, that means more like four o'clock because, you know, mad respect to my mom. She makes the best holiday meals but I always know to pad some extra time in there because she's doing it all by herself and she makes this huge feast so there's always a 30 minute to an hour like delay from what it's supposed to be so I've learned to I've learned to understand that and not go in starving because then I just get cranky so here's what I'm doing I got my crescent rolls I've got my Velveeta slices and I've got some hot dogs that I had to finish up so I thought, oh, I got these hot dogs I'm going to finish up. Why not make some crescent dogs? All right, watching a little raw talk. Got a little not raw crescent rolls here with uh, crescent weenies, I guess you could say. Look at that nice brown color. These are ready to go. So yeah, my pre-Easter dinner lunch. So like a pre-dinner. Because dinner's at 3, 4. So yeah. All right, Easter Sunday was a success. Lots of food. All right, here you go. Got all my leftovers. So I got ham and potatoes and noodles and rice. It's all foggy because it was in the car. And then cupcakes. And then uh, my pigs in a blanket from the morning. And then I have a bunch of games that are my dad's that I need to reinstall. And you'll see why in a minute. And then all of the old tapes of me as a kid. So, you know, here we have... Uh, this one's probably important, 1983 to 1988, well that was birth to five, so probably shouldn't lose that one. And then, uh, let's see, 
88 to 90. Well, apparently my parents got a little more interested in me in the, from 5 to 7. And, the, yeah, they seem to be in about two-year gaps from that point forward. I wonder when they stopped. Let's see. It's got my aunt's wedding. Nathan, which is my cousin. That was in 96. So it looks like 1998 was pretty much when we stopped documenting me. Till now, of course. All right, I got some jeans drying here, but here's the deal. This is my dad's current setup. So this is a original Core i7-920, uh, which actually, that's a really nice cooler I put on there. I put a nice knock to a cooler on this system. I didn't even remember doing that. And it's got 12 gigs of DDR3 tri-channel, uh, but I don't remember what speed that memory is. And then it's got a 650 Ti and then a Corsair, uh, looks like a 650 watt power supply in there as well. I'm assuming that's bronze certified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the components from this system and I'm going to put them inside of my Fractal Design R4. But really I'm not going to use pretty much anything because there's two 500 gig hard drives in there and an optical drive. I mean this thing's pretty much a complete overhaul. The only component I think I'm going to carry over from this machine will be the power supply more than likely. So my dad's going to be getting my 8350, my AMD FX 8350 system. My dad does a lot of computer gaming. He was using a little 17 inch monitor. I think he's got like a 19 inch Dell now. And for Christmas or maybe his birthday, I'm going to get him a 1080p monitor. And in order for me to do that, I want to make sure he has a system that can run all of his current games. So, you know, you've got um, Shadow Play now with the AM or the NVIDIA cards. So I'm not real worried about, you know, having a computer for capture anymore because I can do desktop capturing just fine and I can capture all of my games now with no problem because of Shadow Play. So I'm going to give him that computer. I'm going to give him the 8350. I think he'll use it and he'll enjoy it and it'll be his first SSD experience. What do you think about Easter? Easter kitty. Yeah. All right, so I've made a decision. I'm going to put the AMD 7850 from the home theater PC in my dad's computer. The reason I'm doing that is the card he's got in there, it's like a 650 Ti, it's fine, but this would be a better card for him, and I, I think I'm just going to do that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a 750 Ti, uh, the PNY one, that doesn't require the 6-pin to put in the home theater PC just because it's got such a low power consumption and it's pretty close in performance. It's a little bit slower than the 7850, but it's darn close and its performance per watt is way better. Not to mention I'll be able to get some of those cables out of the way in that case because the, the power cable running to the car is like, ugh, get out of the way. But here's the trick. So I had two of these gift cards to use. One of them was 30 and one of them was 65 and I wanted to use them for my purchase. So what did I do? So here's a little pro tip on what to do with those little Visa prepaid cards. Since you can't pay with multiple cards on a lot of sites like Amazon, just go in and give yourself an Amazon gift card. Look, I sent myself a gift card. This makes it super easy when you go to check out because you just throw the gift card numbers in there, subtracts that from the balance, and then you put in your usual payment method and you're good to go. So I'll be able to get the card for about $155 minus the $95 I have in those prepaid rebate visas and I'll be able to get the card for like 60 bucks plus tax so for $60 my dad's gonna have a nice graphics card I'm gonna have a lower power graphics card like power consumption yeah, a little bit on speed but far lower power consumption card in my home theater PC and it's smaller and it's quieter and I don't have to run the six pin power cable win 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 Okay, interesting thing about my couch. First off, my big butt broke it. So I'm sitting, I'm like low riding right now. I need to fix it. I think one of the support beams underneath the couch gave way. I just sat down one day and I was like this, and it was like, oops. So anyway, I've got this entire L-shaped couch that I inherited from my parents years ago when I graduated college and I moved into my first apartment. And it followed me to my house. And you know what? I've got a cat and he's got claws, so I'm not real inclined to upgrade the couch at all because it's got some scratch marks in it. 
But the other thing is, is it's probably too big because I never sit over here. As a matter of fact, that blanket over there has been there since Christmas. All right, so here is the i7-920 build with 12 gigabytes of, uh, I looked it up, it's DDR3-1333, which was cutting edge in 2009, the Noctua Cooler and 650Ti, and apparently I didn't practice cable management. And this thing hasn't been dusted out in a while. So that is my dad's current system, complete with random hanging zip tie. And then this is the one he's going to be he's going to be receiving from me. So this one has the 16 gigabytes of low profile memory in it. That network card will be staying with me because my dad is using a little wireless card. You can see right there. So anyway, you got the Intel and you got the AMD. It's a face off which is clearly no competition. The AMD 8350 will spank the pants off of the i7-920. 2009, late 2011. Actually, technically the i20 came out in 2008, so it's not really a fair fight. All right, well this freaking LED, it has these little clips right here. So that clip didn't want to stay. So I tried to use Gorilla Glue, that didn't work. I had a thing of crazy glue that I couldn't get open, but I finally got it open, but it snapped in half and I opened it. But I got it open and I got it glued on there. So now I just gotta put the cable back in. However, I also got crazy glue all over my hands. That hand, and a little bit on that hand as well. So I quite literally almost glued myself to myself. Pigs in a blanket at 11.15 at night. Always a good decision. All right, so I just finished up playing some Titanfall, and I gotta say, it wasn't a fun experience. I was doing okay. I was ranking kind of in the middle of the pack, but two or three of the players on the team apparently weren't real happy with me because they kept posting in the lobby that I needed to leave because I suck. So I left, and then I went to go back in. The load times are long, and I'm waiting and waiting. I get in the lobby, and then... It puts me in a team with four other people that are like, you know, level 300. You know, because every time you hit level 50, then you get like another, like, I forget what they call it. But then there's got the little number next to your name. So anyway, you know, I'm like level 12. And of course, immediately people in the lobby are like, you need to leave, you need to leave. What's up with the matchmaking in this game? I mean, I know everybody's bitching about the matchmaking, but... I mean, come on, quit throwing me in matches with people that are like hundreds of levels higher than me. And then those players get mad because I matched up with them. It's not fun for me because I don't want to be in that group. I don't know. They need to get that worked out. Looks like rains are coming, Willie. With photography. Now, I'm no... So, just watching the Easter weekend vlog from... Mr. David Franco, and I've got a cat that's all riled up down here because the windows are open, which is awesome. Now, the downside is, is while it's been super nice the whole weekend, it's 70 degrees today, according to my watch, which is cool. Nerding out. Uh, it's supposed to drop to like 55 for the high tomorrow and be all rainy. There's some rain coming in, apparently, so I'm trying to soak in. Soak in that fresh air. You know how the air gets that smell right before it's going to rain? Love that smell. It's just, it smells so good. So I always get the windows open as wide as I can and just let the air blow through the house when that rain's coming in. But then, then, you can't be paying attention or rain blows all over your electronics that are right by your window. So I've got a video uploading right now, the review of my, my bathroom edition review of the SoundLink Mini from Bose which uh, actually has so much bass. I don't address this in review because I hadn't used it long enough, but it has so much bass that it actually starts moving. So what I originally did is I have like this little decorative. My mom came over and I'm just gonna like put this out there right now. When I bought this house, I, I called my mom and I'm like, boop, boop, boop. Hey, mom, I bought a house and the walls are white and there's nothing in it. Can you help me decorate? Done. So pretty much anything in here was selected by my mom because she's really good at that stuff. So I had it sitting on this little decorative jar because I had really good sounding bass when it was sitting on that and it was like, because it, it was right in the corner 
and it shook itself off of it. So then I set it on the desk or the counter itself, and it like it was starting like this, and then it would just like turn itself because it would rattle. So now I've got to use the power plug on the side and kind of brace it against a basket that's sitting on the on the counter so it doesn't move too much. So it, it packs a punch, uh, most definitely. And for as heavy as it is, that's impressive. But if you if you actually touch the counter, it's like you can feel it shaking. So that's pretty cool. Hey, look, my video's uploaded. I can do my annotations now. All right, got my nerd shrine. All right, first off, look at this guy. Got this for, I believe, my 27th birthday, maybe? 28th? I don't know, I don't remember. Then I've got my Noctua fan boxes, my Maximus 6 Hero box, my, hitting the door, my M5A99FX Pro R 2.0, that rolls right off the tongue. Old GeForce 9800 GT. My FX 8350, practition. My Mac Tonight, oh yeah. And it says, hey Chris, Doug Jones, Mac Tonight. I don't know how many people watching this are old enough to even remember these commercials. And then my 4770K. And my E3 1230 V3. Alright, so getting ready to tape the cooling upgrade. I'm getting distracted by my TV. But yeah, getting ready to tape the cooling upgrade in my H440 case. And I went a little crazy on this. Four fans, LED, two more fans. Then there's the Noctua fans up there. This fan's gonna get replaced. Two of the fans deep inside there are going to get replaced and actually all three of them are, are going to get replaced so yeah lots of fans so you'll have uh this video will actually already be up by the time i post the vlog if you haven't watched it watch it well there it is the led fans are in the computer setup is complete and i have a spare af140 Okay, here's what happens when the cat spots another cat outside. It's getting upset. Look at the puff on that tail. Dude, puffersons. Look at you. You are mad. This probably isn't smart. If I startle him, he's going to bite me. There's got to be a cat outside. If it's a bunny or something else, he doesn't get this worked up. A cat? Oh, yeah. Man, look at that. I gotta clean the ledge again, Willie. Look how dirty that is. You're gross. Calm it down a little bit. I think you scared him away. The puff factor on the tail is reduced by, I would say, 30%. Alright, I think we're down to a 70% reduction in puffage. The crisis seems to, uh... The crisis seems to be coming to a close. So it's hump day, it's Wednesday, and I was digging through a box in my closet and actually found a bunch of really cool old hardware. So I took a bunch of pictures of it, and I'm actually having some fun in Aperture. So uh, yeah, here's what I'm uh, just playing around with some of the images, but there's an old uh, 3DFX Voodoo 2. Uh, then uh, there's the other one behind it, that was the old SLI setup, so I thought... A bunch of different pictures that I took of lots and lots of hardware, so no shortage of hardware there. All right, it's dinner time. Real quick, here's all that old hardware that I found. Look at that. I'm just I'm geeking out over this. I love it. This brings back so many good memories. You've got an Athlon 666, a Duron 750, a Pentium 133, a Diamond 3DFX Voodoo 4 megabyte. Well, actually, that's that. <laughs> Silly me, that's the 3DFX Voodoo 2 8 megabytes and the 3DFX Voodoo 2 8 megabyte. Then, of course, the cooler for probably the Duron. Look at that sweet hologram. And then, of course, Pentium 2 350. All 100 megahertz on the front side's bus. Made a little frozen pizza. Look, mmm, that's not greasy at all. And then I've got some Dave's Gourmet Hot Pepper. Ghost Pepper, actually. It's so hot, it's spooky. Spooky. But for real, this stuff is really, really hot. One drop is enough to get you sweating. So if you're really into hot and spicy, pick up some of this. If you're not into hot and spicy, don't eat this. Almost got the key ingredient to pizza. Everybody knows that's barbecue sauce. Oh, there, there we go. 
Yeah, you gotta have BBQ. I mean, come on. Hey guys, it is Thursday, and I am installing Windows 7 and drivers and updates and all that good stuff on my AMD FX 8350 system because it's going to my dad this weekend. So, a little uh, tip for you here. First off, that's the system. I think I've shown this many times. Uh, the graphics card that's in there now is a 650 Ti. It's going to get replaced by uh, a 7850 soon, as soon as I take it out of the home theater PC. Okay, so here's the computer desktop. Obviously, everything is still in the driverless resolution. But checking out the drivers, I just did the AMD uh, chipset installer or whatever. But going into the device manager, you can see here that even though I have my LAN driver installed, the Realtek, uh, I've still got this network controller. And then I was reminded, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, this has a wireless card in it. But I have no idea what the heck wireless card is in here. So here's how you go about finding that if you have no idea what the heck is popping up here. Right click on the device and go to properties. Go to details. And then up here, where it says device description, click on hardware ID. Click on the hardware ID and hit copy. All right, everybody calm down. I'm going to use Internet Explorer because I don't have anything else installed yet. And then go to Google. And then paste the hardware ID. And you should get whatever it is as one of your first results. So here we have driver identifier. And there it is right there. That is a RA Link Turbo Wireless LAN card. So then I can just copy that and go back to my Google search results. Paste it up here. And search. All right, there it is. So, yeah, if you've got some oddball piece of hardware in your system and you don't know or don't remember what it is, or sometimes when you do installs, there's something on the motherboard, like sometimes a Bluetooth module or something will get you, and you just cannot, for the life of you, figure out what the heck it is, and I'm really OCD about that. I can't have that little question mark sitting there in the device manager. I have to have everything identified. So if that happens, just copy and paste that hardware ID, and nine times out of ten, you'll get a result telling you what it is. All right, it's Friday evening, so it's time to close out this week's vlog. But as I copy over the files to my dad's new gaming PC, which is my AMD FX 8350 system that I put my 7850 AMD graphics card in so he'd be able to do some sweet, sweet gaming because he's not doing anything crazy like 1440p or anything like that. But the system he had was getting a little bit old, so I decided I'd update him. So just finishing that up, got all the Windows updates done last night, took hours because it was Windows 7. And while I was doing that, I kind of started a little bit of my spring cleaning. And I was in my closet, and I found this white box, and it was unmarked. I was like, wonder what's in here? You know, you move, and you just throw stuff, and then you don't even know what it is. And I opened it up, and it was like an explosion of nostalgia. So here's what I found. For all you youngins out there who don't know what this is, this is the Diamond Multimedia 3DFX Voodoo graphics card, PCI. 4 megabytes of video memory, and look at that, VGA pass-through to go from your 2D graphics card to your 3D graphics card. And you know, this really brought back a lot of good memories for me, and it, you know, a little history for those who don't know, and a little, a little nostalgia for those that do. When this card came out, it kind of changed everything, because up until this point, gaming on computers you know for most most part it was you know we're just coming out of the days of doom and things like that and they called it i believe when you went into your video settings it was just called software emulation and when you ran it in that mode it would use your 2d graphics card and then it would be really pixelated so think playstation graphics but kind of worse you know we complain about pixels now you know, the Xbox One and PS4 debate, 720p versus 1080p, and everybody's like, oh, it's 720p, I can see all the pixels, and I can see the jaggies, and it just looks awful, it looks so bad, I can't believe anybody buy an Xbox One, because it just looks bad. Now, let's, let's be real here, Xbox One still looks freaking good, compared to what we had just even a couple years ago. Now, think back to the days of this, you're talking giant pixels in your games, and then this bad boy comes out, a little 3DFX card right there, those two little chips right there, changed everything for PC gaming at the time. All of a sudden, the Glide API comes in the scene, 
and you've got that. You know, I think it was a derivative of OpenGL, actually. And it, it just changed everything. Games all of a sudden looked great. Things were smooth. You know, 640 by 480, maybe 800 by 600 if you were, you know, pushing things. If you had a, a nice Pentium processor in your system and maybe 16 to 32 megabytes of RAM, you were, you were rocking and rolling. And it just made it so games looked good. There were, the pixels weren't there anymore. You could have lighting effects. Everything was smooth. And then I remember getting my issue of PC, Maximum PC or something like that, and it had Quake 2 on the cover, and it was December, I believe, 1997 issue, might have been 98, and it was really thick, and it had this huge feature article in it about Quake 2 and all the lighting effects that it was going to have and just how it was really changing the scape for, you know, first-person shooters, and this is when, you know, they were just still coming on the scene. And then Unreal came out, but at the same time, those two games were the hotness, so was this, the 3DFX Voodoo 2. This was back when naming of graphics cards made sense. Voodoo, Voodoo 2. Not like today where you have, you know, like with the AMD, you got the 7850 and then all of a sudden you got the 260. What's that? You know, it's just, you know, you have all these rebranded cards that are totally different names from each other. This made sense back then. Voodoo, bigger version, Voodoo 2. Also PCI, this one had 12 megabytes of video memory because it had chips on the back and the front, and that's how you could tell. There was an 8 megabyte model and a 12, and you could get either one, and they were like two and three hundred dollars, maybe three and four hundred dollars. They're really expensive. And this card came out, and all of a sudden, 800 by 600. You know, you were good to go, rocking and rolling, and Quake 2 and things like that. And then Unreal came on the scene, and it was everybody was like, "Man, I can't imagine what this game would look like at 1024 by 768." And the answer to that was one of the earliest SLI solutions: two 12 megabyte. Voodoo 2 graphics card. So you'd have them together in your system and they connected through this little ribbon cable, a little short ribbon cable that came with it. You put two of these bad boys in there and I remember reading and geeking out to, to old issues of Maximum PC and things like that and they had like my dream build and I think it was like an NVIDIA Riva TNT and a 212 megabyte model Voodoo 2s and a Pentium 2 maybe 450 at the time and made 64 megabytes of RAM maybe. I can't remember what the RAM was, but it was this freaking awesome. And anyway, I was like, I have to have that. I have to be able to do that. So I saved up and saved up and saved up, got two of these bad boys, and invited all my friends over, and we played Unreal at 1024 by 768 on my 17-inch CRT monitor, which was big for the day. And just all of us were blown away. The lighting effects, the graphics, the, the physics engine, everything looked so good. And I remember thinking at the time, Games aren't going to be able to get a whole lot better than this. I mean, this is just amazing. How are we going to go up from here? And of course we did, obviously. And now we're in an, you know, an era where we're nitpicking 720p versus 1080p when I was happy to spend, well, I wasn't happy, but willing to spend six to $700 to be able to play a game at 1024 by 768. So, you know, why is this important? Well, 3DFX kind of made gaming on the PC really viable at the time. And the Glide API kind of set the stage for what ended up becoming DirectX because it opened the door to competition. And when NVIDIA came on the scene with their Riva TNT graphics card, it was a big deal because these cards required a separate 2D card and then you had to pass through using the cable to the Voodoo 2 or the Voodoo. And when it would do that handoff when you start up a game, sometimes that didn't go well and the game would crash. So they came out with the the NVIDIA Riva TNT, and it was the first time you could have a 2D and 3D card together, and it just worked. You only had to have one card in your system, and then all of a sudden AGP was a thing, and that's when DirectX really started to take off. And then what happened was DirectX just kept getting more and more popular because of the convenience of the graphics card architecture. And eventually, 3DFX released some more cards. They had Voodoo 3s and a series of those, and then the Glide API. Let's all have a moment of silence. It went away. So now today, DirectX actually has some competition again, which is great. OpenGL is starting to become viable again in the gaming scene, thanks a lot to Steam and Linux Gaming and the Steam Box. And that's awesome because developers are starting to see that OpenGL is probably going to be a direction that they're going to have to look at going in games moving forward if they want to have the flexibility of multiple platforms. And I like that because competition is good. And DirectX was able to get way too comfortable for way too long and release not the best product out there in the world and, and kind of hampering some graphics cards where there could be a lot more. Now DirectX is coming out saying, well, oh, DirectX 12, we're going to be able to give you all these, you know, 20, 30, 40% boost in performance. Well, if you could do that, why wasn't it there before? Well, they didn't have the competition. And thank you, AMD, 
for coming out with freaking Mantle because Mantle is now pushing the limit. Now you've got DirectX, OpenGL, and Mantle. That's what you need. You need that kind of competition. So we're kind of going back to the days of when you had Glide and OpenGL and DirectX all competing with each other. Obviously, we're probably not going to have all three of these last, but it's nice to have the competition there again, just like it used to be 97, 98, 99, so we can keep improving things. So that's my kind of nostalgic rant on, on graphics cards and gaming, and I'll just say this. If you were around between 1995 and 2001 in the computer, you know, nerding out in the computer scene, uh, that, that stretch of time is really cool. It's not like today where we're having these little incremental steps up where we're nitpicking games. Oh, are you gaming at 1080? Well, why not 1440? Oh, yeah, well, is your system 4K ready? No, we were going from gigantic pixels in games to things looking smooth to all of a sudden having lighting effects to games like Unreal, and then online gaming came on the scene. I mean, Quake 2 got that huge online community behind it. And those were the days when computers improved a lot with each generation. Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, huge jumps. AMD comes out with the, you know, all of a sudden you got the AMD K6, and then you got the K7 Athlon. It was just a time when things improved, and they improved a lot with each step and each generational movement. I don't think we see that so much anymore today, and we're kind of spoiled. All right, well, that's going to wrap up this week's vlog. As always, if you enjoyed this content or found it helpful, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. The more subscribers I get, the more content I can bring to you, and the, the greater the likelihood that I'm going to be able to get samples and things in to be able to get my hands on and share with you and, and do even more builds and just have fun and be able to do more with this channel. So yeah, click that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. And you know what? I got some stuff coming up this weekend. Show, show. So be sure to check back soon. See ya.